మమ్మల్ని అతిమికులుగా ప్రేమించిన మా ప్రియ పరలోకపు తండ్రి ఈ యొక్క ప్రత్యేకమైన ఉదయకాల సమయం అందు మాకు అనుగ్రహించిన శ్రేష్టమైన ఆరాధన సమయం అందును బట్టి మీకు ఎన్నో స్థుతి వందనములు స్తోత్రములు తెలియజేస్తూ వస్తూ ఉన్నాం తండ్రి మా ప్రభువ మీరు మాకు అనుగ్రహించిన సమయంలో మా ప్రభావ ఇప్పటి వరకును కూడా పాటల ద్వారా మా యొక్క వ్యక్తిగత ఆరాధన ద్వారా అర్పణల ద్వారా మా ప్రభావం మిమ్మల్ని స్థుతించుకున్నాం మిమ్మల్ని గానపరుచుకున్నాం మీరేమై ఉన్నారు అన్నటువంటి సంగతిని జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకున్నాం ఈ ప్రత్యేకమైన సమయం అందు మా ప్రభావ వాక్యం ద్వారా మరి మీరు మాతో మాట్లాడి మా యొక్క ఆత్మీయ జీవితములకు సరిపడేటువంటి నాయన ప్రభు ఆత్మీయ ఆహారమును మాకు దయచేయమని మా తండ్రి మా యొక్క వెనుకడలో నాయన ప్రభు యొక్క వాక్యములు మా యొక్క జీవితములు ఫలించలాగిన మీ సహాయం దయచేయమని మనం చేసుకుంటూ ఉన్నాను మా తండ్రి వాక్యము నేది మాట్లాడేవారు నీరు మీరు సెలువ చాట్లు నన్ను మరుగుపరిచి మా ప్రభు మా ప్రియుడు మా రక్షకుడు అని యేసు క్రీస్తు ప్రభులు వారు నాయన ప్రభు మరి ఆరాధించలాగున గనపరచబడులాగున మా తండ్రి మా యొక్క వాక్య ధ్యానాన్ని మీరు మార్చుకున్నామని ఈ సమయం అందు మా ప్రభు మా యొక్క వినికిడిని మీ చేతులకు సమర్పణ చేసుకుంటూ మీ స్వరమును వినిపించి మా ప్రభు మమ్మలందరినీ కూడా బలపరచమని మిమ్మల్ని ప్రత్యేకంగా వాక్యపరిచారు కొరకు ఆహ్వానిస్తూ మమ్మల్ని మేము ఈ చేతులకు సమర్పణ చేసుకుంటూ మా ప్రభువును మా రక్షకుడైన క్రీస్తేశ్వరికి దివ్య నామంలో ప్రార్థన మిక్కలు వినపూర్వకంగా బ్రతిమాలు వేడుకుంచున్నాము పరమ తండ్రి ఆమెన్ లుకాసు వార్త ఒకటో అధ్యాయము అరవై ఏడు నుండి చివరి వరకు ఉన్నటువంటి మాటలను ఈ యొక్క ఉదయకాల సమయాన్ని మనం ధ్యానం చేసుకుందాం వి ఆల్ నో దట్ విఆర్ డూయింగ్ లుక్స్ గాస్పల్ సో లెట్స్ రీడ్ దోస్ ప్యాసేజెస్ అండ్ దెన్ వీ విల్ వీ విల్ డీల్ విత్ దీస్ వర్సెస్ ద లార్డ్ విల్ విలింగ్ లుక్ అశోవార్త ఒకటో అధ్యాయము అరవై ఏడవ మాట నుండి చివరి వరకు అనగా ఎనభై ఒక్క మాట వరకు మనం మార్చి మార్చి చదువుకుందాం and read it in english um so we all can follow luke's gospel chapter 1 verse 67 all the way till we 80 verse <clears throat> and his father zechariah was filled with the holy spirit and prophesied saying blessed be the lord god of israel for he has visited and redeemed his people verse 69 and and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant david as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant verse 73 the oath that he swore to our father abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all our days and you child will be called the prophet of the most high for you will go before the lord to prepare his ways to give knowledge of salvation to his people in forgiveness of their sins was 78 because of the tender mercy of our god whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high was 79 to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace was 80 altogether and the child grew and became strong in spirit and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to israel premana devani yaka sangama yaka odikala samayanni ee yaka bhaganni manu dhyanam cheskune bhagam it's called benedictus na kuda peda telledu as we read about um, this one uh, we we stumble upon this word benedictus is a latin or greek word so i have titled this um, this portion of scripture as that way though we don't find it uh, mentioned in the word of god but uh, i titled that way anyways <clears throat> పోయిన వారం మనం ఇది ఈ ప్యాసేజ్ యొక్క కాంటెక్స్ట్ ప్రస్తుత సందర్భం పోయిన వారం వర్తమానంలో మనం కవర్ చేస్తాం కాబట్టి జస్ట్ అ ఫ్యూ థింగ్స్ దట్ ఐ విల్ మెన్షన్ 
ఈ చుట్టుపక్కల ఉన్నటువంటి వాక్య భాగాలు యోహాను బాప్తిస్ మిచ్చి యోహాన యొక్క జన్మ జన్మాన్ని జ్ఞాపకం చేసేటువంటి వాక్య భాగాలు యాభై ఏడు నుంచి యాభై ఎనిమిది వరకు మనం చూసినట్లయితే యోహాను బాప్తిస్ మిచ్చి యోహాన్ యొక్క పుట్టుక గురించినటువంటి ఆ యొక్క మాటలు మనకి కనబడతాయి అదే ప్రకారంగా దేవదూత ఈ యోహాన్ యొక్క తండ్రి గారైన జక్రాయకి వాగ్దానం చేసినట్లుగా అనేకమైనటువంటి వారు మరి ఈ యొక్క ప్రత్యేకమైన సందర్భాన్ని వారందరూ కూడా తిలకించి మరి దేవుని మహిమ పరుస్తారు అని వాగ్దానం చేసినటువంటి ఆ యొక్క ప్రవచించినటువంటి ఆ యొక్క దూత ఆ యొక్క వాగ్దానాలను నెరవేరబడినట్లుగా యాభై తొమ్మిది అరవై మూడులో కూడా మనం చూస్తాము దాని తర్వాత విశ్వాసంలో నడుస్తున్నటువంటి జకరయ్య గారు మరి మ్యూట్గా ఉన్నటువంటి పరిస్థితిని బట్టి మరి ఆయన విశ్వాసం వెల్లడి పరచగా అనగా నామకరణంలో ఈయన యోహాను అనబడాలి అన్నటువంటి నామకరణంలో మరి ఆ విశ్వాసాన్ని ప్రకటన చేయగా ఆయన యొక్క మాట తిరిగి రావటం అనేది అక్కడ గొప్ప సందర్భం సందేశాన్ని అక్కడ మనం చూసాం ఇవన్నీ కూడా మరి పోయిన వారం మనం గమనించినటువంటి సత్యాలుగా మనం చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం ఈ యొక్క మరి నియర్ కాంటెక్స్ట్ లో మనం చూసినట్లయితే ఒక అద్భుతమైనటువంటి విషయం ఒకటి మరి ఈ కుటుంబంలో జరిగింది ఈ కుటుంబం అనగా జకరాయ గారు అదే ప్రకారంగా మరి ఎలిజబెత్ గారి కుటుంబంలో యొక్క గొప్ప సందేశం ఒక సందర్భం జరిగినటువంటి సందర్భం ఇది ఆ సందర్భంలో మరి పరిచారకుడైనటువంటి జకరాయ చేసినటువంటి ఈ యొక్క ప్రవచనం అని కూడా మనం చూసుకుంటూ ఉన్నాం లూకా శివార్తలో నాలుగు ప్రత్యేకమైనటువంటి సాంగ్స్ ఉన్నాయి సాంగ్స్ అంటే కీర్తన కీర్తనలు పాడదగ్గవి లేకపోతే మహిమ పరిచేటువంటి కీర్తనలు నాలుగు కనబడతాయి అందులో మొట్టమొదటిది మరి మరియా చేసినటువంటి మేరీ ద మ్యాగ్నిఫికెంట్ అని మనం మొదటి సందేశంలో మనం విన్నాం రెండవ సందేశం అనుకు బహుశా అనుకుంటా లేదు యాక్చువల్గి థర్డ్ 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 ఆర్ ఫోర్త్ లో మనం విన్నాం బ్రదర్ నవీన్ గారు దాన్ని షేర్ చేశారు దట్స్ ద ఫస్ట్ సామ్ ఇన్ ఇన్ లూక్ దే ఆర్ ఫోర్ అండ్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద సెకండ్ ఆఫ్ దోస్ దట్ లిస్ట్ లో ఇది రెండవది దిస్ ఇస్ కాల్ సెక్రాస్ ద బెనిడిక్టస్ ఓకే రెండు పద్నాలుగులో ద ఏంజల్స్ మనం పాడుకున్న పాట ద ఏంజల్స్ ద గ్లోరియా ఇన్ ఎక్సలెసెస్ అని ఎక్సలెసెస్ అని మూడవ కీర్తన నాలుగవది సిమియోను మరి ప్రవచనంగా చెప్పినటువంటి ఆ యొక్క మాటల్లో ద సిమియన్స్ ద నాన్ డిమిటస్ అని దట్స్ ద ఫోర్త్ సామ్ దట్ వీ ఫైండ్ ఏన్ ఇదంతా ఒక ఉపోద్ఘాతంగా చెప్తా ఉన్నాను ఎందుకు చెప్తా ఉన్నానంటే ఇవన్నీ బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ చేసుకొని ఈ వాక్య భాగాలు మనం చూస్తే మనకి దీని యొక్క సందర్భం దీంట్లో ఉన్న అర్థాన్ని మనం జాగ్రత్తగా గమనించడానికి మనకి ఇవన్నీ ఉపయోగపడతాయి అనమాట so what we just read um is a response um to long wait chaala samsaralaga eduru chustunnatvanti oka sandarbhanni manaki gurtu chestha untadi anamata um oka vidhanga joodali anante ee bharya bartha yokka jeevithamlo veer paricharakale gaani ee paricharakul jeevithamlo oka chaala విచిత్రమైన లేకపోతే విచిత్రం కాకపోయినా ఒక చాలా క్లిష్టతరమైనటువంటి ఒక సమస్య ఉంది ఏమిటి అని అంటే వీళ్ళకి సంతానం లేనటువంటి పరిస్థితి అయితే సంతానం లేకపోవటం అనేది ఒక కడుసు లాగా చూసేటువంటి ఆ యొక్క దినాలు అదే ఒక శాపం లాగా భావించేటువంటి దినాల్లో ఒక నీతి మంతుడైనటువంటి జకరాయ గారు కుటుంబం నివసిస్తూ ఉంది ఇప్పుడే మన ఆరాధన వర్తమానంలో కూడా మనం అదే జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకున్నాం నోవాహు He is a preacher of righteousness in the midst of a generation uh, who are um, against um, God, right? If we look at our lives, we also have a lot of pain in our lives. In that pain, it's a long wait. How long is it? It's almost towards the end of 
హిస్ లైఫ్ ఆ టైం వరకు కూడా ఎదురు చూచినటువంటి ఒక వ్యక్తి నోట్లోంచి వచ్చినటువంటి ఈ యొక్క ప్రైజ్ అండ్ ప్రొక్లమేషన్ అని మనం చూసుకోవచ్చు అంత దిస్ ఇస్ బేసికలీ ద హిమ్ ఇస్ బేసికలీ రెస్పాన్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రైజ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద వన్ హూ వెయిటెడ్ సో పేషెంట్లీ లాస్ట్ టైం కూడా చూసాం కదా దెర్ ఆర్ టూ మేజర్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ um that zekaria and elizabeth exhibited and those two major elements are faith and patience devuni oka vagdhanalu unnai mana jeevithamlo kuda paricharukudainatundi zekaria jeevithamlo kuda manam chusinatlayite aina paricharya chestunanta kaalam kuda anekamainatundi vagdhanalu pondukunnatundi vaade zekaria aithe aina pondukunnatundi vagdhanalu e vidhanga swatantrinchukunnadu ani manam chusinatlayite by two elements number one is faith and number two is patience విశ్వాసము దాని తర్వాత ఓర్పు ఈ రెండు కూడా మరి ఉండటం బట్టి ఈ యొక్క మాటలు ఆయన నోట్లోంచి బయటకు రావటం అనేది మనం గమనిస్తూ ఉన్నాం సో దిస్ హిమ్ ఈజ్ బేసికలీ రెస్పాన్స్ ఆఫ్ ప్రైజ్ ఫ్రమ్ ద లిప్స్ ఆఫ్ వన్ హూ వెయిటెడ్ పేషెంట్లీ ఫర్ గాడ్స్ సేవింగ్ యాక్షన్ ఇట్స్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ ద బాయ్ బిన్ బోర్న్ ఇన్ ఇన్ దియర్ ఫ్యామిలీ బట్ ఇట్స్ ఆల్సో యాజ్ అ ప్రీస్ట్ అండ్ యాజ్ 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 సర్వెంట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ they have been waiting for god's redemption or god's work of salvation chaala nirikshana galigunnaru eppudu deva kumarudu ee lokamunaku vachinatvanti sandarbham eppudu unto annadi ani kanipettunatvanti aa yokka samayalu inka inka oka step lo unnaku vellali anante devuni yokka vaaku raavatam aagipoyindi మలాకీ గ్రంథంతో ఆగిపోయినటువంటి ఆ యొక్క పరిస్థితిని మనం గమనిస్తూ ఉన్నాం కదా అటువంటి పరిస్థితుల్లో దేర్ ఇస్ నో అనాయింటింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ ఇన్ దోస్ డేస్ హోలీ స్పిరిట్ యూస్ టు అనాయింట్ వెరీ పర్టికులర్ పీపుల్ ఫార్ ద ప్రోగ్రెస్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్స్ వర్క్ అది కూడా ఆగిపోయింది సుమారు నాలుగు వందల సంవత్సరాలు అని చెప్పుకుంటారు కదా ఆ నాలుగు వందల సంవత్సరాలు ఐ ఇస్ లాంగ్ వెయిట్ ఫోర్ అండ్ ఎవరిని అడిగిన ఏ దేర్ ఇస్ నో ట్రేస్ ఆఫ్ ద వర్డ్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ నేను నా తండ్రిని అడిగినా ఏమి చెప్పట్లే నా తండ్రి తా వాళ్ళ నా తండ్రిని అడిగినా ఏమి చెప్పట్లే మొత్తాతలను అడిగినా ఏమి చెప్పట్లే ఏమైనా వచ్చిందంటే ఏమీ రావటం లేదు ఏమైనా విన్నారంటే ఏమీ వినలేదు అటువంటి సమయాల్లో ఇట్స్ లాంగ్ వెయిట్ సో ద ప్రైజ్ ఇస్ కమింగ్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ అ లిప్స్ ఆఫ్ అ మ్యాన్ అండ్ అ ఫ్యామిలీ was been waiting not only for the consolation not only for the lord's work to do but also personally it's also personal because there's no child in the family it's a long wait it's not one year of marriage two year of marriage three years is number of years of marriage and there's no child so avidhanga manam chusinatlayite chaala adbhutamaina vishayalu aina note lo nunchi vachinatluga manam gamanisthu unnam but uh, before we actually uh, dig into the details of this Mm, you know this um, this passage i want to um, reflect back on um, zacharias uh, life how he lead, led his life one we, we know that he lived in faith and patience and uh, the bible also reminds us and real quick i want to mention this that um, he is mentioned as a priest in verse 5 uh, or a worshipper of god or he aina paricharakudu devuni sevakudaina devuni yokka sannidhilo undi devuni yokka paricharya chestunnatundi devuni yokka sevakudu he exercised his priestly duties and uh, in the midst of his priestly duties god visited him that's what we see in the uh, in the verses 11 and 11 to 20 when the angel comes and he speaks right um so that's one thing that we know that uh, zechariah is a worshipper or a priest secondly we see that this is the most important thing um that is mentioned about zechariah he is a righteous one aina neeti mantudu నీతి మంతుడు అని దేవుని యొక్క వాక్యం ఆయన గురించినటువంటి ఒక టెస్ట్ మనీ ఈజ్ గివెన్ టు బట్ దిస్ ఇస్ నాట్ దాట్ దట్ సింపుల్ థింగ్ టు సే దట్ హీస్ రైచస్ రిమెంబర్ యు అండ్ ఐ ఆర్ రైచస్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ జీసస్ క్రైస్ట్ బట్ ఇఫ్ ది ఓల్డ్ టెస్టమెంట్ ఆర్ ది ద స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఈజ్ ఈ స్టాంపింగ్ అ రైచస్ స్టాంప్ ఆన్ సమ్ సమ్ పీపుల్ this this is really really very 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 difficult um a testimony to give and um and and if you notice the the word that is used by luke uh, luke in this in these passages is attributed to four others and those four others being john the baptist and um in luke's gospel chapter 1 verse 17 it's simeon in luke's gospel chapter 2 verse 25 
Joseph of Arimathea. Uh, he's also a righteous and a just man. Mind you, this is all before the blood of Jesus was shed. And, um, and, and Joseph of Arimathea, Arimathea in uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 23 and verse 15, and obviously our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, uh, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, verse 47, and also uh, in his further writings in Acts. So, Ivedanga Juste, he's one of the elite members, uh, according uh, to uh, Luke, as he writes this. So, when he says that he's a righteous man, or when he says that uh, this is a righteous family, he's actually taking into consideration the lives of uh, people like uh, John the Baptist, life of people like Simeon and uh, Joseph of Arimathea, and also uh, our Lord and our Savior Jesus. In this select company, um, Zechariah is placed, and uh, and he gives why Luke thinks that he's a re righteous man, or why the Holy Spirit has testified um, that Luke is righteous, is because of two reasons. Number one is. Uh, in the same verse we see in, uh, in, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, uh, verse, uh, uh, verse 6, mm. and, 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 and thereon it says, righteous verse, there are two things, like walking, walk uh, blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. Uh, um, so there are two things. There, there one thing is walking with the Lord. It is, walking means it's, um, it's basically the ethics of uh, Zechariah, how I live, uh, the standard of my life, how I walk, how I present myself, how I uh, conduct myself. That's the walk. Uh, um, that is one thing. And then it also attributes to obeying all the commandments of the Lord. Obeying. Prati Adeshani Goda, Aina, Tucha Tapakunda, Marhudian Saramga, Hodi Purkunga, Partinchina Twenty Vadiga. So Luke is associating two things. The righteousness uh, is attributed. Mana righteousness attribute dening jastho mo. Mano niti mantra vanje pona man konde. Mano niti mantra vani praje pona ante mano mano prabhu lo nanga vatte because of the blood of Jesus Christ. But here Luke says that he is a righteous man because of two things. Number one is his walk with the Lord. Aina narka na chuchi. A narka na chuchi in darvata. Ina devniya ka sava kudu. Ina devniya ka bedda ani chapgal gedu. Antamatra ka adgani. He obeyed all the commandments of God. That means, basically, commandment and deity devni chettam. It is the will of God. So ina devni chetta ani saranga narchina saksha ani kora pundu ko natlaga mano chustu onam. So therefore, um, um, before the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, the pe uh, people like John, the Baptist, Simeon, Joseph. Of Arimathea and Jesus, according to the Luke Gospel, uh, the attribution uh, or uh, or the association of righteousness is given to um, uh, Zechariah based on these two things: walking and obeying, fulfilling the commandments of God, and uh, that is deemed as righteousness. And he is also blameless. Meaning that he obeyed everything pertaining. Um, uh, to the word of God and, and, and also not only to the word of God and also to his walk when he received the word from the angel um, he demonstrated his complete allegiance his, his complete obedience to what he received from the angel and therefore uh, when the angel said A, B, C and D he followed everything he received everything by faith and uh, in the presence of God, he, he asked a question, which is very natural. Like, I'm an old man, and you are giving me this now. Like, how can this be? Uh, everyone asks that question. Even Mary asks, like, how can this be? Um, so even Zacharias asks. But that moment of unbelief or doubt, um, uh, the angel uh, shuts his mouth and hearing as well. But in all of these things, he, he obeyed what he received. I name Pondu Kunado than Gansaranga Jivincher. Jivincher and the care, Marie Bandulander Negru Kunad, Edrincher, Bandulander under Ainaki Zakrayan Pere Patale, Aina Ni Tarwata, Ni Rutulone, Aina Konsagali, Ani Jepnapuru, Marie Ainik with Trekanga Barandaki, with Trekanga Barri Bartha Ledra Galsi, Marie Chakaga, Varke Drinchi, Ledu in Pere Yohan, Enduki Yohano, Indicantina, Pere Pondu Kunadagav, Wakan Pondu Kunadagav, Viswasunto. Aina, the further um, 
um, uh, asserting of the fact that he is righteous, his mouth opened. Ayan lo gan deceit unnat laite. Ayan lo gan iniquity unnat laite. Ayan lo gan i papa unnat laite. Ayan lo gan i vitrekata lakpate disobedience unnat laite. I vision jarige dikado. Ayan ayan or inka alage unnu. Inka avisvasu unnat laite. Ayan or alage unnu. Kavate when the miracle happened, it asserts the fact. That he's a righteous man, and eventually, um, um, his mouth opened, and his hearing opened, and he he opened his mouth, and eventually, the first act of this declared righteousness upon him, he bursts out in praise and worship. Ekadu chala patal manu nechko achu. Manung kada Yesu Christu Prabhu Varyaka mari thyagan batti ayin yokka silva maranan batti manam kuda pondukunna twenty ayoka neetini batti mana note lunch kuda mottamadiga raavalsindi enti anante itwanti aaradhana the praise uh, that came and that burst out of his mouth that's the first thing uh, that came out of this mouth ani manam chustunnam so therefore um, it is um, it is quite a thing that we understand that, that the um, the righteousness that is attributed to zacharias is based on um these two things which is the walking and also obeying both of them along with faith and patience all these beautiful things that we see in the life of zacharias now um what we see in this passage is uh, real quick there are three basic things mood mood bhagalga manu vidagottochu ee passage ni um a mood bhagalga manu chusinatlaithe mottamodati bhagam there is only one one verse um that that is um, yeah, apart from the benedictus or apart from the hymn uh, one verse is that zacharias was filled with the holy spirit and he prophesied that's one part in itself a complete um, a package of um, you know joy and happiness that happened in his life the second thing is the description of god the savior uh, or god savior uh, that we see in the 68 verse 75 they uh, మరి యొక్క హస్త ఆయన చేసినటువంటి కార్యం ఆయన పంపించినటువంటి తన యొక్క విమోచన అన్నది ఆయన విశదీకరించినట్లుగా అరవై ఎనిమిది నుంచి అరవై డెబ్బై ఐదు వచనాలు మనం చూస్తున్నాం దాని తర్వాత గాడ్స్ ఫోర్ రన్నర్ ముందు ఆయన ముందు వెళ్ళేటువంటి ఒక ఫోర్ రన్నర్ ని మనం చూస్తున్నాం హూ ఇస్ జాన్ ద బ్యాప్టిస్ట్ అండ్ దేర్ ఆర్ ఫోర్ ఫైవ్ వర్సెస్ దట్ దిస్ దిస్ హిమ్ అట్రిబ్యూట్స్ టు హిమ్ టు జాన్ ద బ్యాప్టిస్ట్ which is eventually uh, his son so avidhanga manam chuchinatlaithe ikkada chaala goppa vishayalu manaki kanapadutundi the first thing that we see is that after a long period of time of so many years passed the indwelling of the holy spirit or the anointing of the holy spirit was not there <clears throat> just imagine devudu ఓ పని చేయండి మీరందరూ కూడా ఏం చేయాలంటే షట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఫ్రమ్ యువర్ మైండ్ ఫర్ వన్ డే అండ్ సీ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ దేవుడు అన్నటువంటి ఆ యొక్క పదం ఎనీథింగ్ రిలేటెడ్ టు గాడ్ షట్ డౌన్ అండ్ సీ హౌ ఇట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఇట్స్ ఇట్ విల్ బి లైక్ అ డ్రౌట్ మనం బతకలేము దేవుడు ఆయన తలంపు కానీ ఆయన మాట కానీ ఆయన పాట కానీ రానటువంటి దినం as um, as believers in christ we cannot we cannot survive i don't know how they have survived but um indwelling of the holy spirit ante ento evarki telledu evaru nadigina cheppaleru aa dinalla ala jarigindanta ante dan ardham emante evarki telledu atuvanti paristhithillo his father was filled and john's father zachary was filled with the holy spirit none of them know what it means only zachary has know what it means so therefore we need to give more attention to what he is speaking uh, because that's the first time nobody spoke that way since uh, the last prophet so we see the indwelling of the holy spirit here and the father uh, filled father zechariah was filled with the holy ghost and prophesied mariyu aina tanri zechariah parishuddhatma poorundai itlu pravachinchenu సో హియర్ విసి మనం బెనడిక్టస్ అని చెప్పుకున్నటువంటి యొక్క కీర్తన హిమ్ ఈజ్ బేసికలీ టూ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ మనం చెప్పుకున్నాం కదా జక్రాయ గారు ఒక పరిచారకుడు పరిచారకుడు మీనింగ్ లైక్ దేవునికి పరిచర్య చేసేటువంటి వాడు దేవునికి ఆరాధన 
చెందవలసినటువంటి ఆరాధన అర్పించేటువంటి వాడు అదే ప్రకారంగా దేవుడి నుంచి ఆయన పొందుకున్నటువంటి ఆ యొక్క ఆత్మీయ ఆహారం వారి ప్రజలకు అందించేటువంటి వాడు హీఈస్ లైక్ అమీడియట్ అండ్ యాజ్ హీఈస్ వర్షిప్పింగ్ హీ నోస్ వర్షిప్పింగ్ హీ ఎస్క్రైబింగ్ వర్షిప్ టు ద లాడ్ అండ్ ఆల్సో బ్రింగింగ్ ద వర్డ్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ టు ద పీపుల్ ఆ విధంగా మనం చూసినట్లయితే దిస్ హిమ్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ ప్రైస్ టు గాడ్ బట్ ఇట్ ఆల్సో అట్రిబ్యూట్స్ a uh, proclamation to the people whenever we say prophecy we don't prophesy to god right we don't prophesy to god when we say prophesy and somebody prophesies it is about the horizontal ministry the ministry is horizontal um so this 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 passage is both praise which goes up and prophecy which goes horizontal so when we say he prophesied that means there is an audience audience is not god audience is the people around the situation or circumstances or anything like that so there is a flavor of both uh, god word and also man word pai kodu altundi koncham horizontal ga kuda velthundi aithe indulo oka pratyekata undi um prophecy meaning like uh, we all know that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Uh, jesus christ and uh, we stick to that uh, most of the times because we don't want to prophesy any jeevitham le jaragabothundi ni jeevithamlo adi jaragabothundi ani ani cheppe tondi prophecy manu vakyanu saramga manu ekkuva protsaha parcham endukanante the prophecy that the bible talks about um, is more the testimony of jesus yesu christu prabhu varu manaki edaithe already manaki cheppuncharo ఏదైతే జరగబోతున్నాయో దాని యొక్క సమ్ అండ్ సమరీ ఈస్ ద స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ ప్రాఫసీ అయితే ఈ లూకా సువార్తలు మనం చూసినట్లయితే వెన్ హీ యూజెస్ ద వర్డ్ ప్రాఫసీ ఇట్ యాక్చువల్లీ మీన్స్ టూ టూ టు త్రీ థింగ్స్ ఆ విధంగా మనం దీన్ని ఖచ్చితంగా మనం చూడాలి ఎందుకనంటే దీనికి చాలా ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఉంది కాబట్టి సో బేసికలీ ఇఫ్ యు సీ ది 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 ఎంటైర్ కాంటెంట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ బెనెడిక్టస్ ఆర్ దిస్ హిమ్ ఇట్ ఆల్స్ ఇట్ ప్రైజెస్ గాడ్ బట్ ఆల్సో మెన్షన్స్ అబౌట్ ద మోటివేషన్ ఫర్ మై ప్రైస్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద మోటివేషన్ ఫర్ మై ప్రైస్ ఎందుకు ఎందుకు ఆరాధిస్తున్నాను ఎందుకు నేను స్థుతిస్తున్నాను ఎందుకు ఆయన గనపరుస్తూ ఉన్నాను అదొకటి కనబడుతుంది రెండవదిగా పరిస్థితి కూడా కనబడుతుంది సర్కమ్స్టాన్సెస్ దట్ ఈస్ మోటివేటింగ్ మై ఫెయిత్ ఆర్ మై ప్రైజ్ అనేది కూడా మనం చూ చూస్తాం ఎందుకంటే జస్ట్ వన్ వర్స్ మనం పైకి పైకి వెళ్ళినట్లయితే వాట్ మేనర్ ఆఫ్ ద చైల్డ్ వుడ్ బీ అంటే ఫర్ ద హ్యాండ్ ఆఫ్ ద లాడ్ వాజ్ అప్ ఆన్ హిమ్ అంటే దేవుని యొక్క కార్యాన్ని వర్క్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ ఈస్ మోటివేషన్ ఫర్ మై ప్రైజ్ అని మనకి ఈ యొక్క మాటల్లో కనబడతా ఉంటుంది అనమాట సో ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టు నో ది 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 సర్కమ్స్టాన్సెస్ ద మోటివేషన్ ఫ్యాక్టర్ ఫర్ దిస్ పర్టికులర్ ప్యాసేజ్ యాజ్ వీ లుక్ ఇన్ టు దిస్ రైట్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వన్ మోర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ దట్ వీ మస్ట్ అండర్స్టాండ్ ఇస్ ది ప్రాఫసీ ఈస్ అసోసియేటెడ్ విత్ ది ఇన్ డ్వెలింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ పరిశుద్ధాత్మ సో కూడినటువంటి ప్రవచన వాక్యం సో దీస్ టు గో టుగెదర్ ఇన్ ఎస్పెషల్ ఇన్ ద గాస్పల్ అకార్డింగ్ టు లూక్ ఈ లూక శువార్తలో ఎప్పుడైతే ప్రాఫసీ అన్నటువంటి మాట మనకి కనబడుతుందో ఇట్స్ ఆల్వేస్ ప్రాఫెట్ ప్రొఫెటిక్ వర్డ్ అలాంగ్ విత్ ద వర్క్ ఆఫ్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ అంటే ది మెన్ స్పీక్ యాజ్ దే ఆర్ మూవ్డ్ బై ద స్పిరిట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ సో దట్ మీన్స్ when a word is given out it's not the man anymore so when zechariah is talking these things when luke writes all of these things from 68 all the way to 80 um and in the part of the benedictus it is not his words it is filled by the holy spirit and then he prophesied meaning to whom will you give credit to the word who is speaking the lord is speaking it's not the mouth of so that is how the servant of god is designed that is how the servant of god um was in those times so when when these words are spoken we don't see that this is zacharias this is the holy spirit and we need to understand what the holy spirit is speaking to us what the holy spirit is speaking through the mouth of zacharias enjeptunaru 
పరిశుద్ధాత్మ దేవుడు జకరాయా నోటి ద్వారా దిస్ ఇస్ దీస్ ఆర్ నాట్ ద వర్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ జకరాయ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ దిస్ ద మౌత్ ఈస్ జకరాయస్ మౌత్ హీస్ జస్ట్ అన్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంట్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ద సేమ్ ద సర్వెంట్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్ వెన్ ఎవర్ హీ స్పీక్స్ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ ఈస్ ద వన్ హూ ఈస్ హూ ఇస్ స్పీకింగ్ థ్రూ ద సర్వెంట్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ and that's how we give credit to the minister of the word of god in our lives dear ones and when we do that uh, we see so many beautiful things that the holy spirit is actually um, conveying to 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 us as we read um, uh, these these so so the indwelling of the uh, word or uh, indwelling of the holy spirit is essential to the letter which is the prophetic word uh, that comes out from the uh, mouth of uh mouth of um uh, zacharias and when we see the pattern of this these um these talkings or these uh speakings we see that um they are always go- going together and some of the examples um we see that when when luke says that he's prophesying um he actually means either of these three things number one is that they are exhorting and strengthening whenever i prophesy let's say i'm a prophet okay i don't i'm not but let's say i'm a prophet when a prophet speak out when he opens his mouth two things number one he is filled with the holy spirit period and if he's not then he is a false prophet okay so when he is filled with the holy spirit he speaks and what happens if he speaks number one he is exhort and strengthen the crowd is exhorted he strengthen in what we will see in this um, in this passage how they are exhorted and how they are strengthened number 2 they interpret the scriptures interpretation of the scriptures that means like illumination of the scripture and its meaning comes through the spirit of god now if i read a passage and if i read a passage and i work through the passage and and say um let me do research on this passage let me let me take uh, all the notes and let 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 me say like uh, what is action and read and read and read and read and read and read and and just just um, um, manufacture all that into a sermon kind of thing um that is so um uh, it's a kind of a duty or that's kind of a narration or it's kind of a i'm performing but when a when a prophet opens his mouth and he strength and he interprets the scriptures that's exactly the work of the holy spirit why because some of the scripture portions are very hard to understand they don't give us any human reasoning for us to understand manaku unna 20 gyanam batti manaku ardham avadu appudu parishuddhaatma devudu they illuminate the scriptures the meaning comes out like a light and that's what we see in the scripture the light comes out from the text and you say oh this is what it means when you say like ask and it shall be given to you the normal reader will see what okay let me ask for anything and he the lord is giving the lord is a giver the lord gives let me ask this and he gives that's what he thinks but when the holy spirit illuminates why it is you go into the 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 context of it and what it says and why it says and what is the lord actually asking me to ask for and he gives to all of them in the double portion of the spirit of god that is how the illumination comes and that's what the second duty or the second office or the office of the prophet is and thirdly and um, not the least but here also um, there is another way to understand um, the third uh, aspect is um, they, that they predict the future and give community now the first thing is exhorting and strengthening in you know, acts chapter 15 verse 32 to one example i want to give and and move on um uh, is that and judas and silas being prophets also themselves what did they do in ex chapter 15 verse and, and and if you doubt that these are uh, luke's writings you must hear the first sermon in this in this uh, thing that you'll understand luke's gospel chapter uh, acts 1532 says that judas and silas being prophets also themselves exhorted the brethren with many so what are, what is the of, what, what is the duty of these prophets they exhort number two they are in inter- putting uh, they are interpreting the scriptures and we see that plenty of times in acts they keep on reminding you you read that words you know what that verse means that verse means jesus christ 
You know what redemption means? That means the blood of Jesus Christ. You know what that psalmist said like that? The prophet said like that? The Moses said like that? You know, that means this is the work of the Lord. Some of the examples, Acts chapter 13, 16 to 41, where Apostle Paul gives the word of encouragement when he, uh, when he opens the scriptures and says, this man is Jesus whom you are reading in the Old Testament. And Simeon in the uh, council of Jerusalem in Acts chapter 15, Simeon goes on uh, to give the counsel from the word of God and he explains that this is the man that we are waiting for. So when the Holy Spirit indwelling came upon the people, they, um, they give the understanding about the word of God. So some of the examples. And then um, there's a little bit of prediction also what is going on, but this is only through the mouth of the Holy Spirit. It's not the mouth of any people. For example, we can see in Acts chapter 13, verse 1 um, and 1 and 2, uh, we see um, that the Holy Spirit says, this is what I'm going to do. So separate these two people for me. And now there were in the church that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers. And who are they? Barnabas and Saul for the work. Uh, and Saul, uh, sorry, Barnabas and Simeon. That was called Niger. And uh, Lucius of Cyrene and uh, Mananin, uh, which had uh, been brought up with Herod. And so, and, and what, 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 what's this was here? And they ministered to the Lord and fast and the Holy Spirit said, and fast and the Holy Spirit said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. So this is something like predicting the future. And who is predicting it here? It is the Holy Spirit of God. And also in Acts, Acts chapter 15, verse 25 to 28, uh, we see again, for, I'm reading from verse 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden. It, is, it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. See, the attributing of the work of the Lord, which is the Holy, which is Holy Spirit in this case, um, what is going to do, what's what is going to happen in the future. So some of those things um, we can attribute. So in Luke's gospel, in the writing of, when we say prophecy, that means number three things uh, are meant. One is to exhort. Prophesying is exhorting. Number two, interpreting the scriptures. Number three, uh, predict the future and guide the community. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit, not any human being. So there is no prophet, right? There's no prophet. I, I go to India and I, I know brother will also uh, will acknowledge the fact that there are prophets in India. They call themselves prophets because reverend is gone. It's old model. Reverend is what? old model. Now, the latest one is apostle. Now, the latest one is prophet. That's how people are raising up their titles. As we see in this word, who is speaking the prophecy? It is the Holy Spirit. So who is the prophet here? It is the Lord. So there are no prophets, right? So the office is very specifically the work and the word of the Lord. And this has nothing to do with who will come as the next president. That's as true as that. The first thing, um, is, uh, as we see in, in this one, um, <clears throat> I forgot to click on these things when I was speaking. <laughs> um, all right. So... <clears throat> So that is what we are attributing, um, the first verse, like he's filled with the Holy Spirit and, and he prophesied. Okay, so the first part of this, this passage um, is, is about the Lord's Savior or God's Savior. If you see verse 68 to 75, um, these prophetic words um, are strengthening the people. So as I mentioned, that this work of the prophetic word or work of uh, the Holy Spirit in prophesying is strengthening, interpreting, and also predicting. And how he's going to do things um, is attributed to the Holy Spirit. Now, as we see in this passage is also, we're going to very quick from here, is number one, we see that these passages are um, uh, are strengthening passages or the words that strengthen the community by reminding the scriptures that God 
has visited us of god's saving will revealed in the uh, redemptive work devudu vimochana karyamlo ee vidhanga manalanu darshincharu ani cheppi this prophetic word is actually exhorting the believers he is not telling what is going to happen he is not going to tell uh, when there will be a tsunami or when there is a earthquake but what he is telling is blessed be the lord god of israel for he has visited and redeemed his people something which is already done has visited the people is a past tense and redeemed his people is again a past tense and he raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house so here as we see in verse 68 he is saying he has visited and redeemed his people has yes, come is done is so whenever i say something which is past that means what am i doing well when i was young in college certain certain things happened i okay let me remind myself of one thing okay when i was in college um i was as attempting a physics exam in my second year of graduation i was attempting a physics exam um i think the paper is for 100 marks and uh, 46 is uh, the pass mark and uh, <clears throat> and lo and behold i don't know anything in the paper when i went to write the exam okay i don't know anything hardly like one question or two and um, everybody is saying like uh, write something write something you want help i'll help you write something and i said i don't know what to write i only know one question or the other question i hardly know something so write some the people are saying write something i'll help you write something i said i don't know i can't write and and i wrote just just what i know and and if i give marks it will be around 12 marks or something and um, the exam is over and people are just uh, they're saying you must be a crazy guy like why did you do this like i said that's all i know and um, lo and behold the results came i got 48 till date i don't know how it happened i went to my sir and said i didn't write anything i don't know how i got it i said i also don't know <laughs> so what am i doing i'm remembering reminding myself that god did something over there i have no idea but i still praise god that's what he's doing here god visited god visited number 2 god redeemed done is over and then in verse 69 he says that he raised up a horn of salvation horn of salvation 71 and all these things he's encouraging us encouraging the people and the sunrise visit to give us light now here is the illumination part sunrise to visit so all of these things is the work of the holy spirit number one to remember is he will exhort the believer he's a comforter do we understand that holy spirit is given for us to be a comforter who can come in parallel with us he is given to us therefore he will exhort he will remind us the word he will exhort us he will just give what is needed for the hour he won't give more he won't give less he knows what to give and that's what um this verse is saying in verses 68 69 71 78 and 79 all these things are exhorting this is not going upwards this is going parallel it is a parallel ministry the upward ministry is over when he said the lord was with blessed be the lord god over upward ministry is over now it is coming to um in the parallel ministry what is parallel means as a preacher as a priest as a worshipper what i do i don't come here and just think to myself and and all glory go to god and i don't care about you no i exhort you i remind you this is our god 10000 have fallen on the other side but you and i are safe sound in the presence of god can we know how beautiful it is i exhort that's what is happening here in all these verses zacharias word strengthen the community secondly we see that zacharias words 
are interpreting the scriptures as well. Not only that he's uh, um, exhorting, and not exhorting by just telling you stories. Yeah, I can tell my story that I, I, I was supposed to fail, but I, I passed. But that's not what he's telling. He's not even telling about that um, I was barren, uh, my, my, my wife was barren, but God opened her womb. He's not telling about that. He's telling about the scripture, the prophetic utterances of the scripture as the men of God spake, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That is what he's bringing to remembrance. In verse 69, he says, from the servant of David, from the house of David. Why is he bringing out all the memories from the old? Because that is where the scripture portions are telling about who is going to come, from which line he is going to come. So he's reminding, not only exhorting the uh, members of the crowd, but he's also exhorting or, or interpreting the scriptures in 69, house of his servant David, when he's reminding, he's also reminding that lineage uh, from where Christ will come. In verse 70, holy prophets of the world. Remember all those words that our prophets have spoken as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from the old, that we should be saved from our enemies. Remember that verse? All of these verses have cross-references across the Bible. In the Old Testament, he's reminding those scriptures and then interpreting the scriptures. Do you know that scripture? You know what it means? It means Jesus Christ. You know, when God said this, what he actually means? It is, means Jesus Christ. You know, when God said he will deliver, you know what it means? It's not delivering from, from the enemy kings. It's not delivering from a government that we do not want. It's not delivering physically from oppression. But it means that is a shadow. But the real substance is Jesus Christ. That is interpretation of the scripture. So very purely and plainly, the Holy Spirit is ministering to the people saying this is what it is. So in verse 70 and in verse 73, remembering the, what he swore to Father Abraham. So the question is, what he swore to Father Abraham? So remembering the scriptures. Oh, what he said, the covenant that he established, that a generation, that a kingdom is going to come from his lions. That means this community, which is now bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. Pure interpretation of the scriptures. So two things that we see in, in this passage. Number one is not only praising God, and giving glory and honor to God, the Holy, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we see that they, uh, the Holy Spirit is exhorting the believers. It is also encouraging the believers. It's an encouraging word. And also, it is interpreting uh, the word. He's interpreting the scriptures in such a way that he has raised up a horn of salvation from the Holy Prophet. And he swore to our father Abraham and so on. Thirdly, and quickly, he also uh, offers guidance of how to live. Now, this is talking about the future. The ministry of the Holy Spirit, talking about the future. Now, you have received, now how you will or have to conduct yourself. So thirdly, his words offer guidance of how the community should, should, should live. Now, what, what he says is 74 and verse 75. He says that, why he did all of that? So that you might serve him without fear. That's prediction. That is future. In the past, you are sitting in darkness. In the past, you are sitting in fear. In the past, you are spending your time for vain things. In the past, you are sitting there and spending your time for all of your personal things. But here's the prediction. The Holy Spirit says, now that he has come, he has visited, he has redeemed now that has happened you know why that has happened it is because for you to serve him without fear and also he says not only just serve him as you are but you must serve him in holiness and righteousness and that's a walk and way of life and how he could speak about holiness now if i speak if i stand here and I speak of holiness and nobody knows what i do when nobody's at home in my home that is absolute blasphemy that's absolute um, uh, rebellion to God. If I speak about holiness standing here and none of you know nothing about how I act when nobody's seeing me, that is absolutely a blunder. But when Zechariah is saying that, 
that that you must serve him without fear and also in holiness and righteousness you know what he's talking about he's talking about the way of his life and who is talking the holy spirit so we see so many things in in the life of zechariah that he is righteous and not only that he's holy yes he is holy he's holy in his marriage he's holy in his conduct and that's how he could survive in the holy of holies when he was ministering and when gabriel came he was given grace see son, that is how beautiful zechariah's life has been so therefore let's conclude on this one that he might serve him that's the purpose that's the goal of this passage that's the goal like why god has given all of that that is because that we might serve him without fear in holiness and in righteousness in all of our days all of our days um as long as we enjoy the presence of god so that's how it has been so in the next four lines for 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 um, verses we talk we see about uh, john um, uh, john the baptist so before we conclude the passage um, that that zechariah's mouth um, out of zechariah's mouth the holy spirit is ministering to us is is divided into three parts number one is it is a word of exhortation to the believers always remember the holy spirit when he opens his mouth he's it's always to encourage never to discourage he will show you what is sin in your life it's not condemnation it is helping you where you need to work and where i need to work and that's what the minister of the holy spirit number one is always to encourage and to edify the believer number two it's always interpreting the scriptures what the scripture is saying and number three is about what our future life is going to be our future life is going to be the same walking in righteousness and holiness period finish what else prophecy do you need what prophecy do we need is it not about our life yes it's about your life it's a walk in holiness and also in faith and in hope and in righteousness serving god without fear this is prophetic word and that's it that's what we and i need and that's the ministry of the holy spirit and this might turn in different flavors as the holy spirit will minister to us through the scripture it's the same the sum and summary is the same it is about exhorting it is about interpreting and it is about our way and walk of life and these are the three um, sum and summary of the work of the holy spirit through the ministry of uh, prophetic office don't believe in any prophets who are saying i had a dream i saw this well let it happen if they happen but we don't base our faith on any of those things three things edifying the believer interpreting the scripture and talking about the walk of life these are the major things of prophetic utterances from the holy spirit according to the luke's gospel and his writings well the next four verses talk about the voice uh, we shall conclude in about 2 to 3 minutes um the fourth thing and the last thing that we see from in this passage is um uh, that um, god's forerunner forerunner uh, which is john the baptist <clears throat> we we see that in verse 76 to verse 80 and you child will be called a prophet again prophet now here we must remember that john was filled with the holy spirit from when from the womb and what is his office prophetic and you all know like what john did john never was in the sanctuary doing his father's business right his father was a priest but we never saw john the last verse of 80 says all the days of his life was in the wilderness so a priest son is never a priest in this case so it all talks about the fulfilling of the word of god and why it happened it is because of the indwelling of the holy spirit he was filled with the holy spirit the office was prophet we saw the prophet has three offices uh, or three ways the prophetic office works in luke's gospel one is to encourage the believer 
Number two, he's interpreted the scriptures. And number three, he talks about walk of life. He's always spoke about repent, you brood of vipers. That is prophetic word. So here is what, uh, what the word is ascribing to. When he says that uh, um, you, my son, uh, in holiness, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, and you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. And where did he get this verse from? He was from 40 chapter, verse 3 of Isaiah. It's a prophetic word. Remembering the scriptures, reminding the scriptures. That's all the Holy Spirit does, dear ones. Don't fall for any gimmick. The Holy Spirit doesn't cast anybody down. That's not what the Holy Spirit does. I took a, uh, an argument with one of the pastors saying like the pastor went to the stage and fell down when the preacher said, or something like that. I said, Pastor, what happened to you? He says, the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit, really? I took a small discussion with him and I said, I never could agree that that is the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit and he fell down. Zachariah did not fall. When Paul preached, somebody fell and he woke him up, right? When Paul was preaching, it was midnight and somebody fell and he died. And Paul went and lifted him up. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lifts people. Don't never make them fall. No, don't fall for all of those gimmicks. So the word of God exhorts that he remind the Holy Spirit, reminds the word of God. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. And um, it talks about the ministry of the John in verse 78 and 80. It says, um, because... Uh, to give knowledge of salvation to his people. Knowledge of salvation to his people. And, and where is this knowledge buried in? The knowledge is buried in only one thing. Through forgiveness of sins. Salvation and forgiveness of sins. That is illuminating. That's the light. Sunrise overpowering darkness. When you see the sunrise today, we didn't see. Because it's all gloomy. But yet, there isn't any darkness outside. Even though it's gloomy. The night is over. The day has come. It is illuminating and giving light. That's what the ministry of John is. The ministry of John, filled by the Holy Spirit, is to remember, remind the scriptures, talk about the walk of life, and also interpret the scriptures. And that's what he says, to give knowledge. Knowledge. Interpreting the scriptures. Knowledge of not how to become rich in this world. Knowledge of not how to how to be successful in this world, knowledge about the scripture, the word of God, the salvation. That's the important knowledge. Salvation. That's the most important knowledge that we can ever gain. And where it is? It is right there. It says to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the forgiveness of sins. That's the most important knowledge that he is preaching. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light which is giving knowledge. So, so sit in the darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. So dear ones, as we conclude the ministry of the word this afternoon, the knowledge is that salvation is buried under one fact, forgiveness of sins. And is given by one man, our Lord and our Savior Jesus. It is the work of God. So says the Holy Spirit of God. And that's the ministry of the triune God. God sent his son. The Holy Spirit is reminding that. Exhorting you as a believer in Christ. And exalting all those who are not believers of Christ. Not to condemn. But to bring to the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. That we see in the face of Jesus Christ. As we conclude this wonderful passage and we approach the elements in the table of the Lord, shall we all examine our, our lives for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives as well? Are we daily encouraged by the Holy Spirit, by the Word of God, by the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives as He reminds us, exhorts us, do we see the Holy Spirit is working through the scripture portions to us, the light illuminated to us? 
Does the Holy Spirit minister to us the walk of life that we needed in our lives? It, does, it, does the Holy Spirit help us to walk righteously? Does the Holy Spirit help us to walk holy in the presence of God? Does the Holy Spirit help us to serve the Lord without fear? To serve the Lord without fear. That's what we're going to examine. If we have received the word of God through faith this morning. If we have not received our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. The word of God exhorts us from this passage. It's the most important light or the knowledge that is there in forgiveness of sins is offered through Christ Jesus our Lord. Will that ever be the most important knowledge in your life and mine? And the child grew up and became strong in the spirit. He became stronger and stronger in the spirit. And he decided that he would dwell in wilderness for the work of the Lord to be completed. In the same manner, have we, in the sight of the Lord, take the path of wilderness, not the path of the world, not to stay comfort in the zones that we are, but go to the wilderness so that the work of the Lord is completed in us and through us. Let's examine. And that will be the ministry of the word of God through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives.